Well, welcome to the Big Picture Live. It's Monday night. And boy, it's a big Monday night. A lot of news breaking even as we speak. And it's one week to the eclipse, y'all. It's a lot of suspicious stuff going on about this eclipse. Just don't feel like a natural phenomenon. We're going to talk about it tonight. We're going to break down the news of the day. Let's go. Hit that like button. Start filling up the live chat. It's live. Monday night, Big Picture Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome into the Big Picture Live. We see people already filling up in here, blowing up in the live chat already. That's what it's all about. We are family. We are family. Hey, 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 hey. I got all my Big Picture family with me. Yeah. If you had not smash that like button, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? You know the drill. Smash it, smash it, smash it. Whether you're watching on YouTube or Rumble. And by the way, that's the only place you're watching it because we're nowhere else but YouTube and Rumble on Monday night. So make sure that you hit the like button no matter where you are watching us and you are following or subscribing, whichever platform you are on. And we would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Also, I want to remind you, too, that uh, if you want to know more about our ministry, let's go ahead and do this now. And uh, we'll talk about the end of the program, too. But <clears throat> once we get going talking about news tonight, we, we're going to be going wide open. So all you got to do is go to LayRagland.com. You go to LayRagland.com, as you can see, our YouTube uh, information is there. And you can get a copy of our book. And several of you, I haven't talked about it in a while, several of you have got a copy of our book. Some of you have been thinking about doing it. You can get it directly there from the website. And if you have read our book, make sure you go to Amazon and give us a big five-star uh, we would appreciate it. It would be great, a good review, because that puts us in front of people and helps us in the algorithm better than anything else. You can also partner with us. When you click the Partner With Us Here tab at the top, you can see that there's all different ways that you can partner with us. And you're helping us build the Big Picture family, and you're helping us build uh, our new studio as we get ready for our new venture in television ministry and so many other things that are going on. So all that's found there at... LarryRaglan.com or LarryRaglan.tv. So we thank you so much for doing that, and we appreciate it. And as I said, we are family here tonight, and I'm looking over. Oh, I'm here. I'm reading the comments. Best book ever. That blesses me so much. And I hope everybody had an amazing uh, resurrection, not uh, transgender visibility day, although it was that according to our president. Uh, I hope that you had a great resurrection Sunday and that you were able to celebrate the, the risen Savior that we serve. There's a lot of stuff going on in the news tonight. And one of the things that's breaking tonight, and I'm going to lead you into the news tonight, and Sandy will be joining me in just a second, but uh, the, the today, right before, uh, actually this morning, I woke up to uh, Amir Safadi uh, breaking the news that, we, uh, that Israel had struck Damascus. And one of the things that we've talked about, the Bible talks about Damascus being in ruins. It's a very, very prophetic and prophetically important city. And it is housing terrorists that are based out of Iran. And today, uh, Israel did something that they've never really done. They took the attack directly in the midst of war to the nation of Iran. Alleged Israeli airstrikes take out Iranian general in Damascus. The strike killed Mohammad Reza Zahidi, a top commander in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, according to a report in Reuters, citing a security source in Lebanon. Now, there's a lot of breaking news, and uh, when I bring Sandy in, we're going to break it down even further because we've got updates beyond this. She's been following it today as well, but this is the top leader that was killed uh, in this raid, and he is one of Iran's top leaders, and they are vowing uh, to come to to retaliate. So without further ado, we're going to bring in the queen, y'all. Show some love. Show some love. There she is. There she is. <laughs> it's great to be back. Thankful for another day. Yes, yes, and, yes. And um, I've almost decided that I'm going to create a blog called Post Op Perils. <laughs> wow. Hey, you, you'd probably get a lot of views. I don't know. It it would be a lot of tears and um, a little bit of anger, but uh, that's part of the journey. Part of the journey. Everything is good. Everything we're trucking along. Um, it's just slow progress, slow but steady. So I'm glad to say, and I'm glad to be here. Glad to see all our friends. Yes. Hello, everybody. Yes. Um, we do hope you had a wonderful, beautiful 
Resurrection Sunday, great weekend with family and friends, celebrated, reflected. Yep. Um, we had an amazing, amazing service. Yes, we did. And uh, it was just, incredible. It was incredible. I'm incredible so thankful. time with family. Incredible so we're, time we're with just, family. Now that we got you on here, we're just mm. going to reboot the beginning of the program yeah. here. Uh, you, we got several people asking for a quick update. Just give us the 60 second version where you're at in your progress. <laughs> yeah. Because people have been praying for you and they really want to know how you're doing. Okay. So Wednesday will be uh, three weeks post op. And um, I'm moving of along. Total knee surgery, if you didn't know uh, that. I'm sorry. Knee. Total knee replacement yep. on my left knee. And uh, I have my stitches out and my knee is still pretty swollen, really sore, especially my kneecap. Um, Doing PT, that's the worst part of the whole physical therapy is how bad my actual kneecap hurts and how hard it makes it to do all the exercises. But um, I'm a little bit behind where I should be on my progress, but I feel like I'm getting better every yes, day, and yeah. I'm thankful for that and yes. looking forward to the future when <laughs> I can walk freely with yes. no help. So yes. Y'all really be praying because y'all know we're going to see that eclipse, so we, we need her Top shape out there. Exactly. We, I don't brought... want to be pushed around in a wheelbarrow, okay? No. So prayers. No. All right, so let's go back to this, Sandy. You you hit me. You was at home. I was at the yeah. office, and we began to hit each other at the same time mm-hmm. in text yep. that the Israel had struck Damascus, and that was right. that was huge. I mean, those that follow Amir Safadi, I believe he's probably the most reliable source because he lives on the ground there in Israel. He is a Messianic Jew, mm-hmm. and uh, he gives updates. And, uh, and did you go? You went to his Telegram. Yes, yes, I did. I only watched the short video that he put on YouTube, and he says, you know, quite boldly, you need to get over to my Telegram. Yeah. And so he, I don't his, know. His words I didn't was, see the pictures, the maps, and everything that he provided on the Telegram. Yeah, his words was this was the boldest move yes. ever yeah. that the Israeli uh, military force that had ever done. That was the language that— um, state in my mind is that he was like, this is, this is big. This is yeah. really bold. Yeah. And I want to say real quick, I saw a couple of people and I can't remember who it was that was saying that they used to contact us. I'm getting that stuff. Just to understand that I'm way behind on responding to a lot of things. I was traveling, preaching in Tennessee. I'm getting your contact us information and I, I will respond to you guys. So if if you if you did just ask that, I'll make sure you use that, uh, that feature on our website. And thanks for prayers, everyone. I can glance every once in a while. I'd I appreciate it, and I do need your prayers. So now, this is from Zero Hedge. I like to follow this site because when a breaking news happens, they'll update the timeline. Are you so, crunching on a cough drop? Did you hear? Can you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Can you guys hear him crunch? Okay. I was like, "What's happening in here?" Yeah. Hey, y'all. <laughs> we got all kinds of issues going on. She's got. We got knee. some stuff going on. So Russia's now entered the fray. They're voicing outrage as death toll rises to 11 after Israeli attack on Iran's Damascus embassy. Uh, Monitors cited in the report the death toll from Monday's Israel attack on Iranian embassy complex in Damascus risen to 11. Wow, it's from uh, from 6. That's the last I saw, 6. So this was updated. I don't know what that is. 538 PM is what it says. So. All right, so uh, Syrians and Lebanese, all of them fighters, none of them civilians, quoted the war monitor as saying, regional international reaction came hours later with Lebanese Lebanese Hezbollah, a close ally of of Iran. It goes on to say that Russian's foreign minister strongly condemns the attack on the Israeli uh, consulate uh, office in Syria because, you know, they're very big in Syria. And this was updates from earlier in the day. Uh, You know, Tehran is vowing a harsh response to the Israeli mm-hmm. attack on its embassy and consulate mm-hmm. earlier in the day, which killed at least <clears throat> five to eight people, reportedly now it's at, of course, at 11. Uh, and you'll see that three of the biggest enemies of Israel were killed. Excuse me. Talk, please. So um, my question on the way here to you is, do you think that there will be an immediate response? You know they're working it out right now. So, and I can't imagine Iran sitting on this for very long. So, um, I hope Israel's defenses are, you know, working top notch because who knows what they're going to do or where it's going to come from. Yeah. And I don't know. Excuse me. (laughs) Pray for the the devil is a liar. (laughs) 
<laughs> Somebody um, said cough drop season or something like that. Yes, yeah, definitely. I've got a whole pocket full right now, so I'll be crunching. I'm the and, one who actually has the allergies, and <clears> I've <throat> been great with that. So. But uh, as, if anybody in the live chat has seen this or if you've seen it, mm. I've not seen an American response yet. I've not seen. I have not. So I don't. So I don't, I'm anxious to know if anyone out there has seen anything. Yeah, from America. From America. Because I, I do, I want, I do want to know what America has said. Right. I believe this is this is a an inevitable. We've been talking about this as an inevitable escalation. Another of just the war. yet another escalation. Yeah. And you don't know week to week where it's coming from. No. Is it going to be China? Is it going to be Russia? Is yeah. it going to come out of the Ukraine? <laughs> is it going to be uh, Israel and Iran? You just don't know. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's. I think it's for a long time now. It's been called the Israel Hamas war, but it's about to be known as the Middle Eastern war. Wow! I really believe that. You know, <clears> as if it's not headed. enough on the land. You've got. I know it's been several weeks, but the Houthis out in the ocean, supposedly cutting cables. Mm-hmm. I mean, my goodness! It. it <laughs> they're sitting around thinking up ways to destroy things and and kill people. Exactly. <clears throat> well. Sorry about the coughing. This is an issue. Thought I got it better today, but as soon as we went on the air, this is it. Babe, hey, you just crunch. I've got it. I'm going to make a new word. Crunch talk. Crunch talk. Mm. <laughs> We're adding it to the list. We've got cough talk, cough talk, and coffee talk, and crunch talk. Crunch talk. <laughs> so you just crunch talk. Okay. How about this? <laughs> Nobody's talking about this. While this is going on, Netanyahu's in the hospital. Did you know that? Uh, how did I miss that? I think everybody missed it. Times of Israel reported <laughs> that Netanyahu had a successful hernia surgery in Jerusalem Hospital. While under anesthesia, the premier, age 74, was replaced by Justice Minister Yavin Levin uh, last year when he had the pacemaker installed. Mm-hmm. And then this is talking about when he was uh, underwent successful surgery for a hernia late Sunday. Oh following a meeting with the war cabinet. <laughs> um, I mean, come on, think about meeting this. Meeting adjourned. Let's wheel him into the operating room right now. I got to take care of a hernia. Y'all go take care of that. <laughs> Look, we're not trying to be funny. Every, no, this is for, Every wow. week, every week we get people saying, stop laughing, stop laughing. We're we just, understand this is not funny. It's kind of nervous laughter. It's kind of yeah. o- being overwhelmed. Yeah. I, I, no, I had no idea. And he, yeah. you're saying... He left a cabinet meeting and says. went to surgery. This is the Times of Israel.com. It says, Okay. Underwent successful surgery for a hernia late Sunday night following a meeting with the war cabinet. He was put under full anesthesia. And during the operation at the Hadassah Hospital, Ellen Karim in Jerusalem, leaving Justice Minister Yariv Levin in charge of the country for several hours. Doctors in Netanyahu's office said in a statement at around 1.30 a.m. that the surgery had gone as planned Thank God. and had been a success. He is awake, recovering, and speaking with family. Okay. No one record, No one reported this. In all the updates, no one said, oh, by the way, while this war, while this attack in Damascus was going on, well, Netanyahu okay. was in the hospital. Okay, let's, let's back it up just a minute. That's probably a good thing. Oh, I understand it. I understand it. Yeah. <laughs> the enemies and detractors didn't need to know that. No, they didn't. I'm glad uh, they reported it after and it the was fact. Success- yes. Yeah. It's done. It was successful. Great. Yeah. Exactly. That's crazy. Yeah. So that so so we got we've got um, major escalation happening in the Middle East. Major escalation now is uh, predicted to be happening very soon in the war in Ukraine, and we have been told. Listen to me now. This is going to play into where we're going tonight, talking about the eclipse. Right. And about halfway through the show, we're going to take a whole big segment. We're going to talk about some things about the eclipse that, that we've not discussed prior to this. It's one week from today. Uh, but yeah. we've been told that intelligence is saying that China is saying the optimal window for escalation with Taiwan is April and May. <laughs> Was March and April, and they've moved to April and May. Well, guess what? This is the first day of April. So... By the way, happy Atheist Day. Some wow. of you will get it later. Mm. Hey, Cheryl. The fool has said it Miss in his you heart. Miss you here at SRC. No Good to see you on chat tonight. Did y'all get that one? Let's see if I can get um, my drums. Where's my drums? Oh, goodness. There he's, it is. he's playing with his sound machine again. Go. Somebody start praying. Happy Atheist Day. Um, so I'm seeing multiple people in chat are saying news is reporting. Uh, this one is CBN reports American officials want regime change. 
Mm-hmm. So I guess they are. Yeah. I mean, that's you're talking been, about you're talking about Netanyahu gone, right? Yeah, that's yeah. been talked about and yeah, bantered right. about. But are are you guys saying that the government is officially making a statement? Well, we'll look for it. We'll look. Okay. We'll look at. I, it. But but look, that, that's not a surprise because that's what no. they want. They they don't they don't want they, Netanyahu. Bottom, they bottom line put is that this. out there, yeah. whether it's yeah. been official or not. Yeah. That's out there. Yeah, they that they, they want that to that that's the inevitable because yeah. you know they they did the. The when the thing first happened on October seventh, it was the catering to it for about a week, mm-hmm. and about maybe ten days later, it started turning, and now it's very anti-Israel. And I'll be honest with you, look, I'm not trying to get real political tonight, but Mm-mm. I'm a little bit dis- not just a little bit, I'm a whole lot of disgusted with this administration. You mean since yesterday since that set you off? That that was just yeah. like like a last straw. Yeah, like you needed one more thing. <clears throat> but, but yes, but, but but here's the thing. They know. I believe they know. Barring some way that they can manipulate the system again, they know that probably Donald Trump is probably going to be president. They cannot, they can't believe it. They can't process that. And if they suspect that at all, what they had planned for another four year term to Mm -hmm. get done, they know they're out of time. So this whole dividing the nation of Israel, this whole just control narrative World right. War Three, all this kind of stuff that was supposed to be down the road four to six years, yeah. they I think they realize we don't have that time anymore. So they are escalating, and you never let's just think of the time. Like just last week was the first time ever that the United States abstained from a United Nations vote that let a, a ceasefire command. Was that on Monday or? I think it was. I think it was when we did our show last week. And then, right, because we talked about it. And then the very next morning, you're on one side of the house, I'm on the other, and I start sending you stories about what had happened last Tuesday morning. Yeah. And some people said, well, you know what, maybe we got that as a result. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> of, exactly. Right. Of abstaining. Every time. Every time a United States president, whether it be Republican or Democrat, calls for the dividing of Israel, major disaster happens. Major. And speaking of major disaster, we need to cover this shocking thing that happened this week. This is what we're talking about, that we uh, were—I got it on my phone first, and then I was alerting you that, hey, you need to— you need to check in. Are we talking about the bridge story now? Yes, yes, yes. You need to see this. I yeah, said, come yeah. I paused the TV. I said, come here. You have to watch this. Yeah. And uh, it's I, insane, y'all. It, it, it didn't even look real. No. I thought it would look like a movie. Um, yes. Baltimore Key Bridge, uh, Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsed live. Temporary channels to open amid warning of national economic catastrophe. They're now talking this could be 10 years, 10 years. It this took a, is the latest, so it's gone from 5 to 10. Yeah, they're, they're, I don't think it will take that five long. 5 or 7 to 10. Okay. Yeah, it took 5 years to build it back when it first got built. Is we it, were supposed to have better technology. Was it not 47 years old when it collapsed? Well, I, mean, I think it was in the 70s. And we later. could kind of understand, All right. uh, you know, they didn't maybe have as many sophisticated, yeah. Yeah. even though the work ethic was possibly better oh, way not back possibly. then. possibly. It was better. Uh, maybe they didn't have as many sophisticated pieces of machinery. Right. And so now here we are 47 years later, and you're saying it may take twice as long well, to replace this bridge. Oh, well, there's, a, there's other reasons. I'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. Uh, but it, it says the Baltimore officials have opened a temporary shipping route around the wreckage to okay. get the port up and running with Maryland Governor Wes Moore warning the disaster poses a national economic catastrophe. You think so? And he goes on to say, um, get this out of the way here. There's so many um, numbers and figures yeah. and charts yeah. on this port, like uh, 850,000 automobiles came well, through they, this port. Th- this, is, this is why it's escalated. We're going to go back to the story in just a second. But this okay. is why it's escalated to 10 years. because Politics? <laughs> exactly. Because of GEI, the environment— they have to make sure the unions are happy. They have to make sure that the— uh, Oh, that one thing you told me. That, that yeah. They, step lightly. I'm going to step lightly. Step lightly. But I watched a press conference where it was either the mm-hmm. governor or the mayor, and I believe it was the governor, said that they're going to ensure that when they rebuild it, that they will know that the history of the bridge will have been built by people uh, that represents all colors, that represents all religions, all nationalities, and all lifestyle choices, basically. DEI. They're going to make sure that when they look at the workers, they're not going to they're not going to say, let's get the best workers. 
They're going to say, we got, we, yeah, we got that one, check. We got that one, check. We got that one, check. And, and that's where we're at right now as, as a world is that we just got to check the boxes right. versus mm-hmm. having somebody building a bridge that is safe that will yeah. that will not come down again and kill people's lives and take people's lives. Yeah, let's that's see where how we're at. backwards we can do this. Let's yeah. see how hard we can make this. Right. Like we do so many other things in this country. It is just utterly ridiculous. And and Sandy, it came out right before we went on the air that they've said emphatically that it will not be it will have a name change. It will not be the same name. They're gonna change the name because just like everything else, Founding Fathers, uh, even though he fought for uh, and defended in court uh, slaves that wanted to be free, he did have slaves, and I think he may have had a few slaves. When he, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not sanctioning that. I'm just telling you, mm-hmm. most everybody in that time did, and you know where, where I'm going with this. Yeah, and it's not right. Yeah, it's not we, right. And we're not trying to condone that. But but they're not going to rename <clears> it. They've already said it. It's not going to be named after the person that wrote the Star Spangled Banner. Okay. It's going to be named after someone else. And you know what? Whatever. But what I'm saying is a bridge collapsed. It's, it is a probably a trillion-dollar-plus disaster that's going to ultimately cost, when you talk about the money down the line that's going to cost to build it and the the shipment of things that are going to be halted. And, and, sure. and, and all they care about is making sure they check the boxes. This is the world we live in. I'm yeah. telling you, this is the world we live. That's yes, this whole thing is. that just. I'm, I'm still stirred up about yesterday Easter. I'm a pastor. Yes, that's the whole thing that got to check the boxes. Nine yeah. proclamations was sent out Saturday. Nine proclamations, mm-hmm. of which one of them was Transgender Visibility yeah. Day, Caesar Chavez Day, Second Chance Month, and something else. And and but not one mention of Easter, not one mention of the resurrection, not one mention of Jesus Christ. And I don't care. Can I just say this and get it out of the way? I don't care that if it falls on March 31st every year and it just happened to be Easter or not, it was still the resurrection day. Yes. And 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 I'm telling you, you feel mm-hmm. good about yourself, sir, because you checked all the boxes. Yeah. But you're not going to feel good about that when you stand before God. Yeah, I'm wow. stirred up. I'm stirred up. Baltimore officials... Uh, have opened a temporary shipping route around the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Call it that now because it won't be called that in the the future. Uh, In in a bid to trade of movements of goods in and out of the port and up and down as soon as possible. But here's what I want to show you. I want to show you, Sandy, we've all seen the video, right? Thank you, Julie. She is gifting some memberships. and that is Wow, thank you. She's giving memberships away while I crunch my cough drop. Oh, we're doing that again? I'm going to do it all night long. Ooh, all right, but look, we've all seen the video uh, of the ship. Yes. And it's, it's, it is literally like, it made me think of Leave the World Behind. You know, oh, it's different. It's there different. There are so many comparisons. Yeah. Because the ship in that um, movie was called the White Lion. The White Lion, right, that's right. So it ran aground. It came yes. right up on the beach. And it was, it was not just a ship. It was a cargo, a cargo container ship, a just like this. Cargo container yeah. ship. Yeah. Um, so this. You've seen the movie on Netflix. This ship comes out of Singapore, and mm-hmm. what is the man's name that it's tied to? Oh my! There's so many things. We should have brought notes for this. Yeah. I didn't think about this aspect of the story, but yes, comparison, comparison, but the comparison. Thing, the thing that was my, it predictive programming yeah, exactly. just about this event? But and think about it. What was it? definitely insinuated more than insinuated in the movie Mm -hmm. is that it was a cyber attack. And the reason that ship ran into that beach is because the, the captain, he didn't, he didn't die and ran it up. Mm -hmm. No, he lost control of the barge. It was hacked And in the whole premise of that movie is the cyber attack is coming and they have the ability to control ships that that was crashing planes, no communications, and, and then, lo and behold, in just a few months, we have a cargo ship, a gigantic cargo ship. Exactly how many months has it been? Two? Three? I mean— Oh, the movie? Since Pro- the, Probably the movie three, three months. Out. Three months, That's four months at the most. about three. So, so here we have this container ship. It's coming towards the bridge. Most of you have seen the video. Uh-huh. And you see the yep. lights go out. Yeah. They flicker. Then you see smoke coming yes. up. Thick then you see the smoke. lights come back on. Then they go back off again. And you're just seeing this ship, and it's just moving like this, and it just turns 
And he hits the pillar. Now, the narrative today, Sandy, is mm-hmm. that the reason it turned towards the pillar is because they dropped anchor, which is which is a safety measure. And when they dropped anchor, the, the anchor grabbed and it turned the ship. Huh. Well, can I tell you something? I hadn't heard that until that's, now. That's the okay. narrative. They've come out and said in the press okay. conference. And they've, you know, you never know what to believe. But they've said they no, flew over in a helicopter. They saw the anchor had been dropped. And and uh, and all of that was the black smoke trying to reverse engines or what? They they've not addressed that yet. Okay. They've not addressed it yet. But here's what I want you to see. I'm going to show you, and I'm so thankful that somebody did this because this really drives home the point. Mm-hmm. This is the same video that we've all seen. Yes. But this is sped up eight times. Okay. Now I want you to notice, and I want you to ask yourself the simple question. Mm-hmm. When you see the sharp turn, because you can't really tell how sharp of a turn it is watching it on the video that you've seen. But when you speed this up eight times, you're going to see this ship going like this, like this, like this, mm-hmm. and almost do a 90 right into that pillar. And I want you to ask yourself the question, Does do you think a ship with that much weight moving the way it's moving, no control, and you drop one anchor— and it grabs something on the bottom of that river, and that anchor is able to turn this hard of a turn. Let's watch this. Look at it. That's almost a 90-degree turn. Look at this. Look at this. Did an anchor do that? It squares up, Sandy. Watch it. It's, exactly. It squares up. Yes. When you watch it fast, look. It literally squares up. It's almost a 90 degree. Okay. To the conspiratorial mind who's already given over into the this was no accident line of thinking and you add the predictive programming from the movie, I'm not going to believe that they're going to drop anger and just hope that they achieve the desired yeah. <laughs> outcome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> not going to happen with me. I don't know about you guys. I mean, it is, I, I guess anything is possible. Any, any kind of accident could be freak accident. I say if it walks like a duck and quacks like yeah, a duck. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, look, there's no way that we can know for sure, but there are a lot of things in the it, it was intended to happen column, okay? Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, and, and there I don't, I don't have the article here. I thought I had it, but, yes, I see uh, somebody's talking about, yeah, Mockingjay. Just yesterday or today, another barge hit a bridge in Oklahoma. Salvador Dali, that's who I was trying to think of. And, uh, no, that was yesterday or yesterday. the day before. And and it, uh, you know, it it didn't bring it down, obviously. But and, and people will say, you know, you know what they're saying now? They're saying, I literally heard someone say this. You conspiracy conspiracy people, because because of this tragedy that's happened, what you don't realize is this happens all the time. And I was like, <laughs> really? It, like happens like this all the time or gigantic what? barges hit bridges all the time. <sighs> People are, they just can't accept that there could be something going on. And I'm not saying that there is, but Sandy, you just said it. Well, if it walks like a, a duck, step, it talks like a duck. I'll go a step farther. Uh, possibly we need to stop globe trotting and finding somebody on the other side of the world to put, lay this at their feet and understand it very well could be your own government doing it. Mm, no, she didn't go there. That just happened. She did not that just go there. That just happened. Mm, okay. Yeah. And she's not her own pain medicine, y'all. That's just Sandy. Yeah, I only had half a pill, and yeah. it's, it's been worn off. So, that's, yeah. That's just Sandy, y'all. That's just the real <laughs> Sandy coming out. We're getting her back, y'all. She's back. She's back. But, hey, we. I thought I was through with this, but I forgot I put this in here. Hmm. When they confronted. Michelle McCurry, I think, commented on that or a little a few minutes ago. When she when they asked Joe Biden today, President Joe Biden, about the proclamation for the National Trans Village, he literally said, I didn't do that. Biden reportedly had no idea that he issued the Trans Day of Visibility proclamation. If this was an April Fool's Day joke, while that Democrats spent the better part of the last six months insisting that President Biden is well old galaxy brain <laughs> behind closed doors. The what? POTUS, I don't know what that means. Okay, somebody look that up. The POTUS I ain't clear, never heard nothing like that in his, my life. His mind is big as the galaxy. 
The POTUS clearly can't keep up with this because we, we all know that. We know he's not tweeting his tweets, okay? He's not Xing his exes, okay? I did, that didn't sound good. I, 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 I didn't do that. Don't X your exes. Yeah. That could be bad. The law could get involved if look, he's doing that. Look, look what he said. Biden said when he was asked, uh, uh, proclaiming Easter Sunday as Trans Day of Visibility, ask about Speaker Johnson's claim. Otherwise, the president replied, he's thoroughly uninformed. I didn't do that. But then, then this tweet, he quotes him, and then the tweet, it says, I, the President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me, the Constitution, declare March 31st the Transgender Day of Visibility. Uh, all the reason I'm showing you this is that if they put a microphone in front of him and they can't control him long enough, he reveals that he's not doing any of this, okay? Uh, he's just not. His name is on the ticket. He's the Democratic candidate, but he's not running. It is the deep state. It is the— I have a lot of thoughts about that, and I have for a while, because <laughs> with so many aides and assistants and uh, controllers and whatever you want to call them, the helpers, there should be about 12 people standing by to just take care of things like that, but yet they continue to happen. So is it an accident or yeah. are they intending for these episodes? Um, That's a good I really, really question that. Well, they had Secret Service in Bunny Rabbit okay. costumes. Okay, we have to read this from Billy Mitchell. Galaxy Brain is a sarcastic internet slang term used to describe ideas that are perplexing, unfathomable, or nonsensical. We got to use that. Dr. Billy Mitchell thank strikes you. again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Billy Mitchell. But now, look, I'm not I'm not sitting here. This is not a hate speech thing, but I want to, I want to, I'm just going to go there and people can get mad at me if they want to. But while it's fresh on everybody's mind, I hear people say, mm. why don't you, why are you so bothered by someone just wanting to live their life and wanting to have recognition? That's not what this is about. Because here's the thing, I I don't think most of you are aware of this, and I'm going to read this to you. And this is not make this is not alleged, this is fact. Okay. Because we are told they're underrepresented and they're unappreciated. What's this? A lot of people are upset with Biden for declaring Easter for the Trans Day of Visibility, but to be fair, the date of it was selected only because of the calendar was already rather full. The Trans Day of Visibility is March 31st. Do not confuse it with the Trans Day of Remembrance, which is November 20th. And you also have to honor Transgender Parent Day, November 6th, Transgender Awareness Week, November 13th to the 19th, International Pronoun Day, October 20th, Trans is distinct from drag, International Drag Day is July 16th, not everyone uh, even has a gender to trans, so a gender pride day is May 19th. Intersex awareness is October 26th. You can come out of any of these national coming out days on October 11th. Omnisexual visibility day is July 6th. Uh, Bisexual Awareness Week is September 22nd. Uh, visibility Day is September 23rd. July 14th is Non-Binary Day. It goes on and on and on. I don't want to sit here and read all this because look how long it is. These There is literally, I believe, it is 126 calendar days, 126 calendar days that, that are set aside for sexual preference and gender. I... Christians get Christmas and Easter. <laughs> yeah. That's Listen, all we get. I had no 126 days idea that there were that many days. That's why Christians are upset. Just give us Christmas and give us resurrection. The birth and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, you got 126 other days. Yeah. Moving on. So how, how many did not know that? Because that is absolutely me. fact. It is absolutely fact. Did not know. All right, so I'm done with that. I'm moving on. Wow, you are just... I'm on fire, man. I'm The preacher man's on me right now. Amped up I had to deal with some stuff yesterday, and I, and I, and I, and I crushed that devil's head. Mm. One of the things we say in our church is, if you hate that devil, shout, I hate that stinking thing. Somebody <laughs> comment in the comment section, if you'd hate the devil, right? I hate that stinking thing. <laughs> now, you remember, Sandy, back when, when the soldiers were had the, what do they call it, the Havana... Um, Flu syndrome. Well, when they lost their hearing and all mm -hmm. of that. Billy Mitchell will know. What was that called when they were attacked? It's in, it's in the article. It's with in the, the article. frequency. It's Havana the Havana syndrome. syndrome. Havana syndrome. Yeah. So 
But the reason yeah. I'm asking you, that it's just come out this week that Russia has now been openly implicated with a secret invisible weapon that is harming more than 100 U.S. officials. The Havana Syndrome, speculated to be a high-energy beam of microwaves mm-hmm. or ultrasound. Frequency weapons, yep. Frequency weapons. The joint investigation by 60 Minutes, The Insider, which is a Russian news website, and Dr. Spiegel, German news website. Der Spiegel. Der Spiegel, excuse me. Mm. Uh, released evidence suggesting Spiegel. the involvement of Russian intelligence uh, unit 29155 in the attacks believed to be caused by a secret weapon. An explosive report, uh, it says it implicates Russia in the so-called mystifying Havana syndrome that has afflicted over 100 U.S. officials with enigmat- how you say that? En- enigmatic... Uh, yeah. Brain injuries. Have they said that they were? It said where? Is it like? Yeah, it says in the article. Embassies or yes, something? Yes, it says okay. the syndrome has been described as a paralyzing force from an invisible weapon, speculated to be a high energy beam of microwave or ultrasound. And then it says, um, it goes down. This is obviously in Russian. Uh, but it says that uh, I know it says it in here. You need to keep going to see if it gives specifics yeah, it, of how it affects you, what it, it exactly uh, okay, does. Okay, it says the neurological. It says in, it, it uh, has a mysterious force incapacitating them with severe neurological symptoms. And research in the clinical effects of Havana syndrome. Uh, it says the efforts to develop acoustic weapons mm-hmm. by a key figure in this group. Uh, and then, it, but it goes down here. Uh, two victims saw employees uh, before the attack, and immediately after, and, and they they begin to see what would happen. And it says in this article that it creates uh, a paralyzing force. It cr- has massive migraine headaches. Mm-hmm. They lose their hearing. Yeah, I've heard that. And many of them cannot walk, mm-hmm. and they are paralyzed permanently. From this invisible weapon. Not all are paralyzed permanently. No. I think there's a variance of symptoms and a variance of degrees of how people are affected. But this can be very serious. There are certainly more than a few people who have had permanent and serious damage. Mm. So, so you know, the reason we cover things like this is just to let you know that they're not conspiracy. These these kind of weapons no. really happen. And when you see these green laser beams scanning neighborhoods, and you see mm-hmm. blue beams, and and then you there's invisible silent weapons. I mean, there's we we just yeah. think of traditional warfare of ammunition, and there's so much more sophisticated weapons now. Okay, well, so let's just drill down on that for a minute. Um, some people believe that a form of maybe not the same exact weapon, but some sort of weapon has been, u- has been used and may be used more as a form of crowd control. Yes. In uh, our country, in our country, on your streets, when you are in a demonstration, when yeah. they're, I hate to say it, but when um, people become angered over different events and mm-hmm. things that happen and they want to gather, they want to protest, they just want to get out in the streets and make some noise. Yeah. Um, officials in our own country are using this as a crowd dispersal because there is from this weapon or another weapon, there is a mode that causes a burning of your skin. It makes you have to run and get away because you can't stay where you are. And so they can easily disperse crowds this way. And, and I believe they're probably using it all over the country, all over the world. Now people are asking why they're not using it in Ukraine. We don't know if they are or not, but I, I have a hard time believing that if they used it in, in Cuba, they're not using it in Ukraine. We don't even have an accurate death count. How in the world no. are we going to know yeah, exactly we, what's going on over exactly. there? Exactly. Hey, and by the way, if you haven't smashed that like button yet, smash it, smash it, smash it. And uh, if you're watching on Rumble, hit that like button as well. And subscribe and follow and share, 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 and comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Um, thank you for everybody that's doing that. Yes. So, Sandy, there's a lot of stuff that, that's because the craziness of the news. A lot of things, while we cover things that you won't hear anywhere else, right? a lot of people probably didn't realize that a major liquid nitrogen fertilizer spill happened uh, in, in an Iowa river that killed 
nearly 750,000 fish. Oh, it's a good thing that they got all that contained, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. wait a minute. Oh, Maybe they didn't. Maybe they didn't. Mm. Yeah, let's zoom in a little bit here so we can read it a little bit better. Let's see. Mess it up here. Okay, y'all better stop with the tinfoil hat. You know I have right. one within arm's length. Stop reading the live chat. You're getting distracted. Sorry, just kidding. Okay. We, we love the live chat. I'm sorry, crunch talk over there. Maybe you should mind your own huh? business. Hey, 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 watch yourself now. We're going to do some marital counseling right here live in there. <sighs> Please. Hundreds of thousands of fish were killed earlier this month in nearly a 50-mile stretch of the East Nishinabana River in the Missouri border due to fertilizer spill in Iowa. On March 11th, uh, Red Oak reported the Iowa Department of Resources that a spill occurred in the Montgomery County. About 1,500 tons equal to 265,000 gallons of liquid nitrogen fertilizer was released into a drainage ditch and subsequently entered the river. The spill happened to to happen due to an above ground storage tank valve that was mistakenly left open over the weekend. Wow. Okay. It goes on to say as of Thursday, it was reported that a total of 749,242 fish have been killed with the most affected species being minnows, shiners, dace, and chubs. Uh, ongoing investigations are being conducted to determine the impact of the fertilizer release on other aquatic life. Um, According to Iowa State Codes, a permit is required to discharge pollutants into a river. So it seems like every week it's something to do with food supply, animals, Unfortunate fish. accident. Yeah. We've had over every week. 100 food processing plants yes. uh, go up in flames or explode or have a plane crash into them. Um, we've had fertilizer plants explode, burn down. Yep. Um, on and on and on. Right, exactly. On and, and that on. doesn't even take into account the many, many businesses that have just gone out of business. Exactly. And then and I've seen so many videos this week of farmers, I mean uh, ranchers, that's out west saying that in Utah and other places, they're coming in, they're taking the land wow. quickly. And, you know, we had the fires in Texas that destroyed the panhandle just yes. recently that was – where most of the cows went to graze, mm -hmm. and guess what they're doing now? The the land several several young um, ranchers are doing videos going, please help us because the land that didn't get burned, they're coming in with bulldozers and turning it over, uh, and they're 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 literally right before our eyes killing the land that our cows have to have to survive. They're killing the beef industry. Not only that, but they are bringing down. Um new regulations that are ridiculous of how they want um, ranchers and farmers to upgrade systems, change things. And these are some farmers and ranchers who have very few cattle. This right, isn't even right. a big corporate thing. Yep. You've got to update. You've got to upgrade this. Yes. Of course they can't afford to do that. So, you know. Yeah. Yep. They have no other alternative but to go out of business. Good thing Bill Gates is going to take care of all that land he's got. Um, but you know, Sandy, we were talking. America's farmer. We were talking about a couple of weeks ago the, the insanity that's happening in Haiti. Yes, uh, and and it's just like it's on the news for a week, and then everybody's just sort of moved on. Haiti is worse than it's ever been, yes. and uh, Haiti has actually been declared this week as an open air prison open-air prison as gang violence reaches apocalyptic levels. The United Nations has sounded the alarm as gangs continue to shoot unarmed civilians and recruit children into their criminal operations. Mm -hmm. The nation is declared to be unsafe in any place. It is, a, it is called, they're basically turning their backs on them, washing their hands and saying, it's just a bunch of criminals. Get out if you can. and Get hey, out if you can. Yeah, which is horrible because the only ones that can get out where are the ones that's got go? the money. you going to go? You're on an island. Right. Well, you know where they're trying to go, America. <laughs> Haiti's crisis has gotten so bad that the country has now been described as an open-air prison an ar as armed gangs continue to kill unarmed civilians and human humanitarian crisis deepens. In recent weeks, the gangs have ramped up their violence as they forced Prime Minister Ariel Henry to resign. A transi transi transitional government has been formed to run the country before elections are held, but the gangs continue to cause chaos 
in the streets of the capital of Port-au-Prince. And, of course, we've covered here a few weeks ago, a couple weeks ago, the head guy running it all, they call him Barbecue, barbecue. because mm-hmm. it is a game, and I can't even believe I'm saying this, that has been known to be cannibalistic. And, of course, this is a this is a country that is heavy in voodoo, yes. that is heavy in all of the, the demonic and all of that. Now, yeah. there are Christians there. There's, there's, in fact, we know people personally that have orphanages there, ministries there, and we're praying for their safety yes. because it is a horrible, horrible situation. Yeah. And uh, and many of them are getting on boats and headed trying to get into Florida, and 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 you know some of them are trying to go in different directions. They're, you know, if I'm in Haiti, I don't blame them. I'm trying to get out of there uh, because if I've got children there, it's just of course. that's be the hard, most horrible place in the world to be. But that's just right off, right off the coast of of America, not that far. It's 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 not that far away that this is happening, yeah. and uh, it is now being declared. Basically, we can't do anything with it, so everybody's just saying that you're on your own. Unbelievable, unbelievable that it's come to this. You hate to use the word cannibalism, but I hate to tell everybody you're just going to hear more of that word, wow. not, and not just in that one area. Wow, it'll be other parts of the world. Man, did you ever think we we'd really come to saying that on this show? We have I mean, sunk so far. Oh my Instead goodness! Instead of advancing in this modern age, in this modern day, we are just destroying ourselves. Wow! 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 Well, you know, speaking of ourselves, you know, we are wherever you're watching around the world. We have people watch every week live and on the replay from all over the world. But, of course, we are in the United States of America, and we are experiencing, really, our invasion is happening on our southern border. And we, we can't, every week there's something that we have to cover. Yes. And uh, so these this invasion is happening on our southern border, this open border, because of this administration. Yeah. And they're going to all these major cities that not long ago, these major cities were so right. excited to have their little press conferences and call themselves sanctuary cities. You know, as long that what they meant was, we want to feel good about ourselves and say that. But Texas, hope it works out for you. Arizona, New Mexico, Southern California, hope it works out for you. But we're all yeah. sanctuary cities. But then all of a sudden, they started getting taken to these cities, and all these cities started start having a change of mind. Well, look, if you want to get your blood boiling, if it ain't already boiling before, then then let me tell you, this is not isolated. This is happening in every major city, and even some small towns around the world. And what you see, this is what's happening. Boston, which is one of the most liberal cities in America, yep. residents are outraged as veterans housing site. Listen to the words. Veterans housing site set to become illegal immigrant shelter. Unbelievable. A former Boston area it veterans is. housing unit will be turned into an illegal immigrant shelter as the city says it has no more room to house the new arrivals. Uh that's do you, have you heard that? That's a new term that they're calling the new arrivals. They're not calling them. They're literally in cities saying we need help with our new arrivals. We're okay. Definitely not going to be hearing the word illegal alien, Mm-mm. and now not immigrants either. No, it's okay. new arrivals. According to Fox News, the former <clears throat> veterans' home at Chelsea, which Massachusetts Governor Mara Healy said was set to be demolished after the creation of a larger veterans' center. Uh, At the shelter, illegal immigrants will have to prove that they're working to get out of government support, applying for work authorization, emergency operations. Basically goes on to say this building was abandoned, so therefore we turned it into it and and so forth. But the premise of the article uh, goes on and on and on to say all over America, we've covered it. Hotels are being bought out. They're being put in four- and five-star hotels. Right. Schools are being emptied and told that the kids are going to go home. And learn from home on computer because we've got to use the schools right. for the new, arri- new arrivals. And I'm just telling you. It's not like we don't have a conclusion here. I know you can't commandeer um, private property or corporate held property, but how many empty office buildings do we have? I mean, if you're going to yeah. pay a five-star hotel right. Right. to house people, why don't we try to convert some of these office buildings instead of taking the schools away from the children. Exactly. Well, I mean, I learned, I know, I think we know why I learned this weekend that we have a school system, a school that is admittedly failing 
And mm. so the county has given parents the option of letting their child attend another county school. Another county school? Because we have to acknowledge that the one that your child is in is failing. Wow. So this is this is in our this our is right area, here right here right here wow so uh, I can't imagine um, being told well your child's gonna be home indefinitely because we have to um, house the visitors mm-hmm. or what did you, what was the term you new, used new arrivals new arrivals yeah new arrivals new arrivals wow so, parents go to the streets do something so many many of you that are watching you you live in cities you live in large cities. Think about how many people you see that are on your streets that are homeless. We live in a small town. We have homeless people in our small town. There's yes. homeless people everywhere. And as yes. this economy gets worse, inflation is not going down. It's continuing to go up. Yeah. It's going to get darker and darker and darker economically for people. As AI begins to take over jobs, less and less people are going to be employed. So you're going to see more and more people homeless. Where, help me somebody. If there's somebody out there that's that's this pro of this policy, if there just happens to be somebody watching this show that could be pro this southern border policy right now, help me understand and make sense how American men and women and, and families are living on the streets. They do not have food. They are homeless. Right. And people are getting you're, free housing, okay, you're free about, education. You're pushing free, my buttons now. That's what I'm saying. You, free, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Free medical care, and they're getting debit cards with thousands of dollars on it. Another example of how to do something backwards. We're not going to take care of our own people, not veterans who fought for this country, who desperately need housing. They need um, medical attention. They need medicines. They need a lot of them psychiatric care. No, no, no. We're not going to do that. We're not going to help you folks who are trying to be um, first time home buyers. Right. We're not going to help you single moms. We're not going to make sure that we honor the elderly in this country. Come what? On. But no, the new arrivals, we're going to make sure fresh off the bus yep. that you have a cell phone, a debit card, a place to live, medical care, and on and on mm-hmm. and on. Mm-hmm. To the tune of, uh, I don't even. What is the uh, the debt now? Is it approaching oh, forty trillions, trillion and trillions? Forty trillion dollars, trillions, and a fake phony uh, Dow that is approaching forty thousand. Gotta give you love, baby. She's back, y'all. She's back. Maybe, but if you see me squirming over here. I have to shift around to get into a comfortable position. So if you hear squeaking and you see squirming, that's why I'm trying well, to get comfortable. Well, let me get you a little bit more stirred up because you ain't you ain't quite stirred. Oh, up you enough. want me to say some more stuff? I want you to <sighs> well, listen to this. It's as part of a 53 million dollar program, giving the average family of four more than 1,400 dollars per month. It's more than the allowance for some deployed troops. Fox News Digital breaking it all down, saying, "Troops, quote, while an average troops, let's start it over." I want you to hear this. We're getting the new arrivals more than we pay the troops? A family of four, $1,440 a month. It's cost. Hey, Ricky. In time headlines up in here. What's up, Ricky? It's cost the New York City taxpayers $53 million already. Watch this. Part of a $53 million program, giving the average family of four more than $1,400 per month. It's more than the allowance for some deployed troops. Fox News Digital breaking it all down, saying, quote, while an average military family is suffering from a deficit of $1,860 over a period of nine months, a similarly sized illegal migrant family is being given nearly seven times more joining seven times more you are dropping bombs everywhere i did not know this i'm telling you it gets your blood boiling y'all what in the world are we doing these are our military these are our veterans these are the people jesus said no man you know what god bless the veterans and the elderly and the troops If you're just a citizen of this country, if you didn't serve, 
If you're just a citizen, yes. do you understand that you are being passed over for people who should have no rights? And listen, I am for taking in immigrants, but yeah. it is too much. Yeah. We cannot sustain this. Legally. I mean, people are human beings are human beings. We, we yes. understand that. You, you don't want to see anybody not eat and have food, but there has to be a law. There has to be systems and laws Yes. To take care of the people. And that's just the bottom line. I got one more news article I'm going to show you. And then we're going to get into some eclipse stuff tonight that is just really crazy stuff, y'all. We're going to talk about the eclipse that's coming up one week from today. But this is also something that happened this week. AT&T had another. I mean, AT&T and these cell phone companies, I mean, they're getting exposed. But they got hacked. It's Listen, it's all right. about cyber attacks. That's what we're talking about, this barge that hit the bridge. I mean, I'm telling y'all right now, we yes. they control the cyber hacks, control everything. If they wanted yeah. to, they could turn it all off right now. AT&T says data breach uh, has impacted millions of customers. Millions of customers. But watch this now. This is crazy. It's found to have compromised various personal information from millions of customers on the dark web. It said Saturday that the, data's, the data set contained information such as social security numbers for about 7.6 million current AT&T cardholders, and 65.4 million former account holders. Ridiculous. Former. Ridiculous. So you, 65 million former, 6.5 current. So you don't you don't got mad at AT&T. You don't moved on, but they kept <laughs> You're your still not safe. You're still not safe. They got your information, and now the dark web's got it, and you over here with Verizon or T-Mobile. I'm telling you, they're right here in the city of Birmingham. The city of Birmingham was ha hacked recently. All ma Many yes. of your major cities were. When they were hacked, right here in the city of Birmingham, Tell it. we were told by people that are in the know, mm -hmm. that, are in, that are in the city of Birmingham, right. that the police department was, was locked down, could not order supplies, could not process things. The fire department could not order supplies, could not in many ways communicate in some ways. Right. They could not even, the city of Birmingham could not even order supplies like toilet paper and stuff. They could not, they could not process salaries. They could not do anything. It's the crazy. city of Birmingham was shut down. And and now we know businesses, there's school districts that have just been locked down for ransom money. Right. They've been doing this forever. They've been testing, testing, testing. I'm telling you, every one of these outages that Verizon went down, Spectrum goes down, this goes down. These are all tests, y'all. I know there's a, there's the random one that just was a computer failure. Mm -hmm. They're all testing sure for that are. leave the world behind movie type sure event that's are. coming. Well, let's go back to. You better get your heart right with God. Uh, many of you out there probably watch Joseph Z, and no, he, you should. He refers back. Um, he's referred back several times to a word that he gave in September. The Lord awakened him from a dream. And, you know, the phrase is, what happens in Vegas will not stay in Vegas. And that was in reference to a hack that was happening in Las Vegas at that time. And look how many things. This is, they were already going on, but it was a big one in Vegas. And look how many yeah. we've had since oh, then. Oh, yeah. And, and I just flashed it up to Ricky from End Time Headlines, which is one of the greatest news sites yes, you can find out is. there. A great friend of ours. Uh, he says, they're warning about cell phone disruptions for the upcoming. Yep. And solar eclipse. Thank you. Good come point. Come on, come on. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The question is, why? Why? Why would an eclipse try to tell you? Or make sure that you you may lose cell phone coverage. Mm -hmm. Why? Yep. Well, we're going to tell you why in just a minute. And right after this thirty second commercial, we're going to show you uh, some stuff that's coming up, y'all, with the eclipse. That's. Would you like to help us build the big picture family? We're on a mission to wake up the world to what is really going on. All you have to do is go to our website at LarryRaglin.com and make a one-time gift, or you can become a monthly partner. Any amount is a blessing and an encouragement to us. While you're there, make sure you get a copy of our book, I See Greatness in You. Browse our merchandise store, connect with us on our social media links, and join our mailing list. We appreciate it. And remember, we ain't woke, but we are certainly awake. Oh, yes, All we right. are. Yes, we are. We are certainly awake. And uh, so I'm going to give a little shout out here to a show that I just did. Some of you have already watched it. 
Uh, you can yes. find it right here. I'll also have it linked Ooh. down below. Urgent warning, the eclipse. Uh, it is really turning out to be one of our... Oh, yeah. I want to say, by the way, great job. And I think I might have mentioned that that you, was... Uh... It was your idea. It was your idea. I'll give you credit. But they I do, wanted it. I do appreciate they it. They wanted it. Yeah, I remember it. last week I said, if you want a yeah. clip show, and it'll be linked down below as soon as we go off, I'll make sure you put uh, put it in there. I'm actually going to play a little clip of it in just a few minutes. But while this eclipse coming up, you know, by this time next week, uh, if everything goes right, we will be broadcasting our live show. Now, make a note of this. Next Monday night, we will be in an undisclosed location. We're not going to let us know, let you know where we're at yet. Arkansas. We're driving to Arkansas to see the, the totality of the full eclipse. Yep. And we will be doing our regular Monday night show from Arkansas live. Not a pre-recorded, live. We've got to make sure everything works. So we'll keep you updated. And throughout the day... Uh, I'll try to do some live streams, some updates, some interviews, and things like that. So it's just going to be an exciting day. Next Monday, April 8th, it's going to be big. Uh, and But while that's going on, y'all, there's other stuff that's going on, too. And I cover that <laughs> extensively in that Eclipse show. Yeah. There's the Horn Comet, the Green Comet, you know, the Green Goblins, what I call it. Uh, it's coming in. <laughs> And then you've got this, the y'all. Towers of towers of fire? f- fires and flames, <laughs> uh, ferocious t- twirling fire, f- mm. towers of flames uh, coming off because of this right here. And by by the way, this is even before we get to Monday. The sun is now in its most active phase that we've ever seen. Mm. It is ejecting another massive flare that just happened uh, today, and it says that it's headed towards Earth. And will arrive tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, is this massive solar uh, uh, phenomenon. Watch this. Yep. The Solar Astronomy Laboratory and the Institute of Space Research of the Russian Academy of Sciences recorded a powerful solar flare, which was assigned to the highest score of X1.1. The explosion occurred almost exactly on the Sun-Earth line in the area of maximum impact of the planet. Now, why that's important, if you watch Stan Dale, he's with us every week. He always tells us. Once a month. Once a month, excuse me. Once a month. He always Mm -hmm. tells us it depends on where that flare comes out. And there is a line that is the worst place for it to be for uh, Earth. And it says this was in that line. The flare was accompanied by a large ejection of plasma masses towards the Earth. Today, several coronal Holes have merged into one giant coronal hole 20 times the size of Earth, shown in the image above. There it is. That big giant hole in the middle there is 20 times the size of Earth. Scientists warn that magnetic storms may cause problems with radio communications, the operation of Earth satellites, and electric grids planet-wise. Doctors recommend not to tire yourself with physical activity on such days. Monitor your blood pressure, get enough sleep, and eat right. Foods rich in magnesium and potassium will help cope with the negative effects of magnetic Tuesday and Wednesday, tomorrow and Wednesday. And, Ricky, this this may be what they Mm. sort of knew was coming, Mm. that, that they're telling people about you may lose cell phone services and all this. Because they are, you're using the eclipse as the excuse, but it's really they don't want to tell you just how bad these solar storms are, which is why you need an EMP shield or something like that on your house. Do you remember years ago we were in our last church building? And we were, I don't remember where we were in one of these 11 year cycles with the sun, but we had some issues. Yeah. You yeah, remember that? Yeah, I do. Cell yeah. phones it's, it's and affected cell maybe phones. processing. A few uh, GPS satellites were yeah. affected. Yeah. yeah. So this is definitely not new, but it seems to be more severe. Oh, the sun is more active than it's, than it's been yeah. in our lifetime. We, you know, as I go back to Stan, he's the expert on it. He's told me that, that it's never, he's never seen it so active as it is now. And he, like you said, he does monitor that. He monitors the sun closely. every day. Now, now you've got that. You've got the solar flares and all this kind of... But wait. But wait, there's more. There's more. Here's my question. And like I said, I go in detail in this on the Eclipse show that I want you to go watch if you haven't already watched it. And if you have watched it, 
go click that link and share it and send it to family and friends. Yes. But I just did a Google search, and I just wanted let's to show you all this. this. Let's drive this show up to 8,000. Come on, let's do it. Let's do 8, it. 10,000. Let's get 10,000. No, 15. Get on here, 15, 15, 15, 15, 20. Give me 20, give me 25. Yeah. Okay, look, so I just went to Google, and I just searched emergency declarations yes. eclipse. Okay, that's all I said. All right, so, uh-oh, wait a minute, what just happened? Ooh. Okay, there we go. Okay. I clicked there we go. it. All right, so, look, these are just, this just came up on Google. These are just the different places in Texas and different uh, areas, mainly in Texas, that came up first. But these are all counties. There's Canada's, Niagara Falls today, New York, Niagara Falls, New York, came out with one, a declaration. Um, you've got all over Texas, you've got different places along the, that are declaring, listen now, these are these are just the first page of Google search. You can go search yourself and you can see counties, cities, municipalities, schools are closing, yep. businesses are shutting down, and they're declaring states of emergency yep. on the same level as a tornado, a hurricane, a tsunami. Yeah, they're, they're telling you to stay home, but they're telling you to get food, water, and gas the car up. Yes, they're, <laughs> they're, they're saying make sure you have a full tank of gas. Some counties, Sandy, are saying, tied to the eclipse, make sure you have two weeks' worth of food and water, charge your cell phones and all your stuff, put gas in your car, and this is what they're saying. They're saying it's because they're just not used to that many people coming to their towns mm -hmm. and taking their resources so it might mess up the we supply chain. So this might not be a good time to mention people that are concerned about the balloons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Raining toxins down from the balloons. Exactly. While you're out there with your glasses trying to watch that eclipse, don't you know? Remember that other movie? Don't look up. Just maybe don't look up. I yeah. don't know. Well, well. Here's the other <laughs> thing. Here's the other thing. You just said it. You just you didn't even know. You just lead me right where I was going. Oh, okay. I want to be a leader. You're a leader, baby. Tiger no. blood. No. No. Watch Lion this. Blood. Lion blood. Lion blood. Lion of okay. the tribe of Judah. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Calm okay. down. Calm down. All right. Bring it back down. So here's the thing. Think about this. Now, I know people's going to say, oh, there he goes again, fear market. No, I'm just trying to get you to think for a minute. If, if we have been for the last three years invaded from our southern border, and if, not saying everybody that's ever come across that border is, is sleeper cells and, and would turn on, but there's no doubt there's terrorists in those groups. Okay, yeah. There's no doubt there's cells spread out all over. Everybody admits that we've Probably. got them spread all over. They're waiting on activation. Mm. If you were going to strike fear, take over or do something, and you have a stretch of darkness, by the way, it's 115 miles wide, Sandy. I don't know if you knew that. 115 miles wide. 150 I thought it was wider than that, but that's wide enough. Yeah, I think yeah. it's about 115. It may be 150, but I think it's 115 miles wide. Okay. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to span from Texas all the way up to Canada. Right. That's totality. Yes. Then you have everybody in America— is going to see a portion of it. Right. Anywhere from 90% all the way down to 50%. Okay. So you have in that swath of totality, mm -hmm. nobody's going to be looking at their phone and playing the game. I don't care who you are. They're all going to be looking up. You're so, a weirdo if you're there. If you do. If you play a video game, <laughs> if you're in a chat you conversation, not that. do not text it's me during so, the eclipse because you will not get a response. It's so awe inspiring. It's only four and a half minutes. Can you give me four and a half minutes, please? So, <laughs> so everybody's looking up. Every policeman, every official, every human being, they're distracted. They're not looking up. They're looking around at people. If you've ever been a part of totality, and we were seven years ago, you yes, cannot yes, explain it. You cannot explain no. it. It is, it is like nothing you've ever experienced in your life. Yep. You will not just be calm. You will be in awe. And so what I'm saying is everybody's guard is going to be down. So I think part of this declaration that they can't say is that they're probably telling their officials, listen, keep your head on a swivel because forget terrorists, theft, break-ins, all kinds of stuff. People who yes. don't really care about that, but see an opportunity oh, yeah. to take advantage of things. I believe you're going to see and hear reports of that. I hope I'm wrong. Hope I'm wrong. And I, mean, I hope that violence doesn't break out. It's, but It's unknown. I mean, you can prepare, but you can never really know what exactly is going to happen. But I will say this. People are a good bit crazier in 2024 than they were just seven years ago in You got that right. 
And let's not forget, and, they're firing rockets into it. Oh, yeah. Don't forget the rockets. And let's definitely don't forget, and you've got to ask yourself this question, okay, conspiracy theorists. Mm -hmm. Let's go down the rabbit hole. Why in the world of all days to fire CERN yeah. back up? Yeah. It is on their website, and I show the actual mm. article in my video. This is just talking about it, but I show it from CERN's website. CERN is set to test world's most powerful particle accelerator during the solar eclipse yeah. to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Why? Why are you doing it now? The world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator is set to smash protons together on April 8th yep. to search for invisible particles powering the universe. Theories have suggested that there are 17 different particles, blah, 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 blah. I don't care about all that stuff. It says, now the team has restarted after a two-year hibernation with hopes of unveiling more mysterious, specifically dark matter. Okay, you've waited two years for this particular type of experiment, mm -hmm. and you know the calendar. The whole world is talking about this day. Everybody's, not everybody, but a lot of people was freaking out, thinking the world's going to come to an end on that day, and they already think you're opening up demonic portals, and mm. you are. Wow. And you're going to just blazingly say, we're not going to wait till the 9th. We're not going to wait till the 10th. We're going to find the secrets to the universe on the 8th. Might I add my opinion? Wow, please do. <laughs> Listen. So um, we say things and we have phrases that we don't po we possibly don't really understand what they mean when we say them. Like um, when something is dark or scary, you get a chill yeah. and it's cold. Mm. And we can relate demons and demonic activity with being such cold and cold-blooded. It's good. Um, when we go to a concert and everybody's in the same mind frame and we recognize that there's an energy in that arena, uh, in that auditorium. There's going to be so gone. many focusing on the same thing so on good. the day of the eclipse, raising different energies, wow. excitement, fear. Could they be wanting to harness some of that energy, knowing some of it is very dark because people have evil intentions That's and they're going to tap into that. They're going to tap into the fear that comes on some people because of what's happening during the eclipse. Uh. You and I, it's not going to be fear for us. Uh -uh. We're going to be all inspired. We're going to be standing there just taking it in praising God praising God in a positive way but I imagine there is going to be a lot of dark and negative that energy is good, babe. so that's, that's just one of my thoughts concerning why they're choosing on. this day to do this I think you're spot on because you're right think <clears> about <throat> the Tower of Babel I mean yeah. even God said yes, we've got did. to stop this because when everybody's on the same page down there, yes. there, there ain't nothing they can't do. Yes. So that's a great point that, you know, the majority of people are going to have this eerie feeling. Yeah. That's just, you're exactly right. And I'm going to tell you something. Even if you're a child of God, it's an eerie feeling. It it's, is. It is a weird, it's not, you know, it's, it's not scary for if you know who you are in God. But I'm telling you, if you are part of it in the totality. Yes. You the world you've never seen the world look like that. No, and this is sort of how I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking. And listen, I encourage everyone to observe everything. Yeah. That is happening. Right. Because not only were we observing the eclipse in the sky, but I would glance at people around yes. me. Yes. Okay. Yes. We we're Christians, obviously, yes. and we experienced it the way that we experienced it. Yeah. But I'm seeing all kinds yeah. of different things happen all around me. People falling on their faces, crying. I'm seeing weeping. believers and non-believers non yes. fall to their knees. Yeah. Overwhelm, overcome. Yes. 
I remember so, hearing one person just saying, I feel so small. I feel so insignificant. I feel so small. I feel so insignificant. And that was that was like a minute and 20 seconds. Yeah. This thing's going to last where we're at right. almost four and a half minutes. There is no telling what is yep. going to happen. Yep. I mean, <clears throat> it's going to be wild. Mm. Well, look, let us let me just show you a little preview clip. I'm just going to show you the beginning. Oh, baby, you and look I, so cute. Oh, well, thank you. Oh. <clears throat> and, um, and that thing that's coming up, they can't see it yet, but I just okay. saw it. So let's, let's watch. That's my baby. Oh, oh, I love you, baby. You're going to make me all <laughs> blush up in here. All right, so and uh, so watch a little bit of this clip here, and I'll fast forward. And this is just, I want you to go back and watch the whole thing. But we break down some things that we don't have time to talk about tonight, but you need to know this information. And then if time permits... We'll have questions at the end from you on the live chat, <coughs> if time permits. <coughs> right now, let's go. The Eclipse Show, everything you wanted to know. Let's go. On April 8th, you could have a chance at seeing something that many have never seen in their lifetime, a total solar eclipse. And this one is unique, so you really don't want to miss it. If you've never experienced one before, just take it from me, someone who has seen one, it is worth every single moment. Let's talk about where this thing is gonna be. Well, the 100% eclipse coverage area will hit land in Mazatlan, Mexico. It will make its way through Mexico up into Texas, passing right over major cities like Dallas. It will go up into the Midwest, going directly over Indianapolis and Cleveland, pushing up into the Northeast, going over cities like Buffalo and Syracuse, and then making its way up into Maine, and then eventually ending in Newfoundland. And that's just part of why this total eclipse is special is the millions upon millions of people who will have the opportunity to see it oh yeah wow. it's going to be incredible yo just fast In forward America, to it. well fast forward a few of these things here i want to show you this right here where the other one is places that would become states i just had a thought many people, right, wait, go ahead. let's go, go ahead back and finish to playing this clip uh, i'm gonna I'm gonna play this part right here that i'm talking about the x and then then you share your thought and I because I want you to go back and watch the whole video. Wow. Yes. So what happens when this when this crosses? This is what happens. This is the actual path of the 2017 eclipse and the actual coming path in a matter of days of the 2024 eclipse. X marks the spot. Now there's a lot of discussion that I'm going to have tonight. And we'll just stop and freeze that, and I won't teach it because I teach it on there. That right. you know, we have seven sa cities of Salem going on the twenty-seven direction, twenty-seventeen direction. <clears throat> we have seven cities of Nineveh going in the other direction. But the most incredible thing is right in the middle of that X is two different cities. Mm -hmm. One is Carbondale, Illinois, Illinois, which is known as Little, Little Egypt. Egypt, and the other is a small town called Rapture. Now we're yeah. not predicting the Rapture. But we just think the symbolism of this is incredible. So give me your thought that you were talking about. Uh, one other quick thought. Did I send you a video or a picture where it said rapture population one? One. <laughs> one person lives and she, there. And that person's an atheist. <laughs> yeah. That oh, lives there. How cool. <coughs> but, okay. But before you go there, one thing I want to point out, too, mm -hmm. is somebody in the live chat reminded me that seven planet planets are going to line up as well Monday. Right. Did you know that? There's yeah. two lining up I today. I forgot about that. And seven is going to line up on Monday at the same time with the comet. Let's not forget, the horn comet could be seen by the naked eye during the eclipse because the sun will be no longer too bright to I've block it. I've got to tell Go. you, Go. I, I am super excited that I hope we get to see that comet. I mean, I am so motivated to see this comet. And We're the, praying against clouds. Y'all pray for good weather. What is the fire? The trails? The, oh, the the towers, the towers, the towers of, of fire so coming out of the sides. I want to see sun all bursting. of that. It's going to be unbelievable. But here's my thought, because I have not seen or heard any, and I'm not saying that there that there, no one has done this, that there's not a video, a study, or whatever. And um, what is that lady's name they got out on the limb? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I can't think of her name now. If you wouldn't say that. Is it Shirley? Shirley McLean. Shirley, Shirley McLean. McLean. I don't want to get out there too far on the limb with her. Yeah. But this is a thought that comes to my mind because you know my mind, how it works. Yes. It's crazy, right? I know. Um, I would love to do a study or try to figure out 
how many ley lines, mm. because these are magnetically energetic lines. Yep. The last eclipse crossed. Yep. If if any. Yep. And if there are any that this eclipse is going to be crossing, and if so, will yep. that add to the craziness and exactly. chaos? That they're already expecting. I would agree. I would agree that we need to know that kind of stuff. There's so much stuff saying we could park right here and talk for for an we hour. Really could because this particular route, and I'll put this map back up again. Not only does it cross across 2017, but it follows the New Madrid fault line. Yes, perfectly. And there's so many other things that is going on that day that, yes. like I said, I don't want to sh say again everything that's on the video. You need to go watch the video. But, you know, one of the – you know, we were talking earlier about the the declarations of emergency and so forth. Yeah. Well, look at this. We're staying on the topic of it, but, but this goes right along with it. Just this week, not only did the FBI come out and give a warning that we're at the highest terror level yeah. that we've ever known – Higher than the than it was around nine eleven, yeah. And they was giving warnings against Easter services to to have your head on a swivel because there was supposedly intelligence of attacks coming against churches. Retired general, this was this week. This is posted today. Warns the public: terror attacks on the United States is inevitable. A retired general has raised the alarm over growing concerns that a major terrorist attack in U.S. soil is now inevitable. And he says the head, former head of the U.S. Central Command warned Sunday that the Islamic terror group ISIS has a strong desire to attack American people. McKenzie said the threat against the U.S. and other foreign powers is growing. Speaking during an appearance on ABC's News this week, McKenzie warned that U.S. officials should, quote, believe them when they say that. I think the threat is growing. He noted that threats from ISIS-K after the Islamic terrorist group took responsibility for a deadly attack in Moscow, Russia, last month that killed more than 140 people. The terror group also claimed responsibility for a mass bombing in Iran in January. It began to grow as soon as we left Afghanistan. Listen to what he's saying. It began to grow as soon as we left Afghanistan. It took pressure off ISIS-K, uh, McKinsey said, referring to Democrat Joe Biden's, Biden's chaotic U.S. withdrawal from the country in 21. Quote, so I think we should expect further attempts of this nature against the United States as well as our partners and other nations abroad. I think this is inevitable. And he goes on to say, when we walk back out, we have no way of looking in that country anymore. We're completely blind. We don't know what's going on. Why am I saying this while we're still talking about the eclipse? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I hope in the name of Jesus, I hope that yes. nothing, it's the most uneventful, wonderful, glorious day. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got good videos and yes. pictures with their family. It's a memory that we'll cherish forever. But I'm telling you, there's something different about this one than seven years ago. And not only are we a different world, yes, we but are. There are, there's just something different. Yeah. There was no kind of proclamations like this before. No. And, 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 and this whole thing about all of these are because of the amount of people coming. Well, these cities bring in Super Bowls and some of these cities that have declared emergencies right. where their cities double and triple in size and all this. There ain't that many people coming in. You know, there's people coming in. But what I'm saying is there's mm -hmm. something else going on, Sandy. There's something else that they mm -hmm. know. We've been talking about it for weeks. I mean, here what we are, coming? you know, standing on the sidelines. There's no way, you know, we have the intelligent, the intel, I'm not the intelligence, but intel right. to put this together and figure out if something is, a plan is being laid, something is trying to be done. Um, maybe somebody out there does. Maybe they know more than we do. But I guess the best thing to do is to be prepared. Well, this is not the greatest sound effect for, for my next news article, <laughs> but it's the closest thing I got. Now, that's the sound of crickets. It's <laughs> crickets. And it won't be long that you'll hope that that's all you hear because what we've all just forgot about that's about to be very in our face mm -hmm. right after this eclipse in a matter of days, if not weeks, the great... Cicada, <laughs> Cicada Geddon. Cicada Geddon. Cicada Geddon. Wow, okay. 
Experts warn against the upcoming, say it for me. <laughs> Cicada Geddon? Cicada Geddon. I can't say it. <laughs> Do y'all remember this? <laughs> Nobody's even talking about no, this anymore. we haven't talked about this in a while. The end might be nigh, but either way, it will end up seriously bugging you. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's good. Various U.S. regions are due to experience an unusually massive swarm of insects emerging from the ground in the spring. It's very soon. Mm. Experts say the spring of 24 will see a rare event. you got to listen to the words here to blow your mind. Mm -hmm. In which the 13-year and the 17-year emergent cycle of different cicadas broods will intersect. According to the AP. The insects are going to intersect. Wow. <laughs> The University of Connecticut cicada expert, John Cooley, dubbed the event Cicada Geddon. The outlet noted, periodic cicadas don't do subtle. <laughs> okay. The last time, listen to this. You will talk about the last time. I mean, we, we, the, the last time these two di differently cycled broods emerged from the ground was in 1803. And the Associated Press reported that then-President Thomas Jefferson wrote about the event in his garden book. Oh, my goodness. However, he mistook the cicadas for locusts. He didn't know. But literally the last time this ever happened, Thomas Jefferson was the president, and he wrote about it. Cicadas are nature's weirdos. <laughs> this, this blew my mind. I did not know this, Sandy. They pee what? strong. I'm a little uncomfortable talking about this. I want to know if anybody knew this. They pee stronger than us, and they have an STD that can turn them into zombies. What? what? This is from the Associated Press. Should we be hearing about this? Yes. You need to know. These things got STDs, and they're peeing. Okay. Mm. Cicadas are nature's weirdos. We've got trillions of these amazing living organisms coming out of the earth, climbing up the trees in this unique experience, and it's going to be a sight to behold. It's like an entire alien species living underneath our feet, and they, and then some prime number of years, they just come out and say hello. The largest brood of cicadas, dubbed brood, what is that, 19, mm -hmm. has a 13-year emergence cycle and are set to spring up from Maryland to Oklahoma, uh, brood... Uh, eight cicadas. No, no, 13, 13, 13 cicadas, however, are generally only confined to the Midwest. But then it goes on to say, I want to see if I hope I've got this. Mm -hmm. I hope I, I didn't get the one with the video. There's, oh, no. there's a guy on a video. He's in, now, maybe, is this it? Let's see. Let's, I'm going to see if this is it. Let's see if this is it. Because I want you to see this okay. guy. I want you to see this guy if it's the one I'm thinking about. Okay. Because, because he describes. The way you're saying that sounds kind of sinister. Oh, come on. Where is it at? Was okay. it not the, at the very top? Maybe. Was the video maybe, not at the very top? May, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Let's just see. Let's that just it? see. That's what yeah, we yeah. kind of associate cicadas. Okay. They come out and they do the two best things they're known to. They'll sing at the top of their voices and they pee in the wind. And as you're walking, you'll feel this. Oh! There'll be hundreds of cicadas. And that's when you look up and... Uh, if you get close enough, they're actually very good camouflage artists. They're very hard to find because they're brown. But wait a minute, you, you missed it. You'll feel this mist because there'll be hundreds of cicadas. You'll feel this mist when you're walking through because there'll be hundreds of cicadas peeing on you. And that's when you look up and uh, you're you get close enough, they're actually very good camouflage artists. They're very hard to find because they're brown. They camouflage uh, oh, with, with the bark. Uh, this year, we're going to get two broods that are going to emerge at the same time. Oh um, and it's, uh, you know, if you have like a aliens. solar eclipse that's going to happen, this is just like that, but multiply by a hundred, a thousand. We're going to get trillions of these amazing living organisms come out of the earth. It's like an entire alien species living underneath our feet. Um, and then some prime number of years, they come out to say hello. And all they do is just climb up on trees and pee. Uh, that's, that's as much damage as they do. Um, but yeah, if you uh, don't just... It's like the neighborhood dog. They're just going to pee on that tree. So here's my question. That's qu all they do. I love that. They just climb up on that tree and they pee. Here's my question. Why do we not ever talk about the fact that they're living underground longer yes. than the average dog or cat? They, what? They, what? I mean... What is going on down there? I, I, 
That is weird. Are, are, are the How long do they live? Yeah, are the original ones dying? That's what I want to know. And they're procreating, and there's just generations that uh, live and die, and then finally it's time for... I, I don't understand. And they just pass it out one day. I'm not going to get to make it. But one day, <laughs> son, you, listen to me, son. When you get up there, you make sure you pee on a tree for me. <laughs> Come here, son, let me teach you. This is how we pee. <laughs> it's difficult down here. When you get up there, you're free in the trees. You pee. And Ooh. then you be careful. You be careful when you go out at night because... Mm. Some of them's got, some of them's got diseases. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's a family show. Yeah. But Sandy, it's like the apocalyptic signs are everywhere. We've got, we've got giant fire tower tears of fire. We've mm-hmm. got devil comets. We've got eclipses, and then we got. An invasion of aliens coming up from the ground, peeing on everything. Of course. You know what? And then when they die, what did, remember what they do? They give them a little husk. Them bodies are going to be everywhere. Living everywhere. <laughs> Crunching oh. everywhere. Some, play, some people eat them. Don't ever attempt to write children's books. I just, I don't think that will go well. <laughs> oh, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say. You're just going to have to change everything if you start trying to write books for children. Oh, yeah. I'm, I, look, I know how to do it. Have to write. Okay, sure. so moving on. Uh, by the way, like I said, as soon as the show's over with, I'll make sure because this is live. This is truly live here. I will put the link, direct link to the Eclipse show. Yeah. You need to go watch it Please and share it. Please watch it. it. It's and a great let's, show. Let's get it in front of as many people as possible. Share but there's it, more news it, to carry, to cover, excuse me. Uh, this right here, this is alarming. There's no going back. The federal, um, the feds now are now hunting down Americans who simply viewed certain YouTube videos. They're coming after the opposition like never before. We've all cracked jokes about our Google searches might one day land us behind bars, not realizing we were pretty much on the nose. Welcome to this version of 1984. A recent report reveals that if you tuned into certain YouTube videos last year, the feds are now curious about who you are. A United States federal court has ordered Google to reveal the identities of tens of thousands of viewers who watched specific videos within a set period. Let freedom ring, right? Day by day, it feels like we are inching closer to North Korea-style surveillance state, and it does not seem like it's going to ease up. Securing the White House in 2024 is critical. He goes on. That's the political side there. But Fox News Fox News reporter Trace Gallagher. I like uh, him. Yeah, I do too. I like him. He seems to be middle of the road. Let's watch this little report. Oh, oh his what? daughter attends the University of Alabama. Well, roll tide. I just saw Come that the on. other night. That's why I like mm-hmm. him. He's got the noise. Order on. Google to hand over the names, addresses, telephone numbers, and user activity of those who watch certain YouTube videos. Unbelievable. The feds were trying to track down a criminal and were apparently tracking you in the process. The senior national correspondent, Kevin Cork, is live in D.C. with the big news about Big Brother. Kevin, good evening. Evening, Trace. According to Forbes, the government asking Google to give up names, addresses, phone numbers, and user activity of all account users who wow. access certain YouTube videos back in January of 2023, as you mentioned, as part of a larger criminal investigation. Now, in another instance, police also asked Google to provide a list of accounts that viewed and or interacted with YouTube live streams that could wow. lead to information again on what they claim was a police search. This is a YouTube live stream. Search. Privacy experts tell Fox Business tonight this discovery is absolutely terrifying, saying it allows the police to target people for simply consuming content. Quote, it's unconstitutional, it's terrifying, and it's happening every day. These YouTube warrants are just as chilling, allowing police to target people simply for the content they consume. No one should fear and knock at the door from police simply because of what YouTube's algorithm serves up. Wow. That is unbelievable. This is this is America. This is America? <laughs> I mean, I know there are some things that you shouldn't be watching. And I know there's some things that you should be really should not be watching. But the truth is, that's not even what this is talking about. This is talking about opposition viewpoints. Yes. That may be considered, you know, you know, now um, 
they've got this term that they use against the church called Christian nationalism. Yes. Which is, let me tell you how they define Christian nationalism. This is not my opinion. This I've watched and heard them define it. They define Christian nationalism as anyone who claims to be a Christian and believes that their rights and their freedom does not mm-hmm. come from government or the, even the Constitution, but that the government and the Constitution gets their rights and freedoms from the Creator. Isn't that what our Constitution says, <laughs> that we are endowed by our Creator, certain and unenalienable rights? Right. Yeah. Life, living in pursuit of happiness. How about that? But now the new definition of the feds of a dangerous group of people are Christian nationalists who believe that yeah. they serve a power that's higher than Washington, D.C. And that's what this is about. That's where it's going. That's why we say if you don't follow us on Rumble, uh, you need to go follow us on Rumble. Go to rumble.com slash Larry Raglan. Yes. Now, I don't know how long Rumble will last, exactly. but I think I think Rumble w- has got a better shot of letting us say some things that, that we want to say than, than I'll just say some other things that we might be on right now. Right. Um, did you hear that algorithm? So, hey. hey. Yeah. NSA? Yep. You listening? Y'all listening? You know they are. Mm. Yep, NSA. Well, that's just scary. That's just scary. Yeah. Um, man, we got the biggest crowd we ever had on here tonight. Listen, I'm going to say thank y'all for watching. Come, well, on. come on. Let's keep blowing it up. Yeah. Hitting that like button. Hitting that like button. I wish somebody had rolled through here with that snack card. I'm getting hungry. Woo, come on. Come mm-hmm. on. I'm down to Minute made Lemonade. I'm, th- I'm thirsty. But we ain't done, Sandy. We ain't done. We got more mm-hmm. news to cover. And then oh, Uncle Bring Jimmy's it. on his way. If you're new to our show, listen, Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy is the Supernatural AI update, which we'll be coming to in just a minute. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Dave, Uncle, Dave, Dave. the algorithm hear us? I can't do that, Dave. <sighs> Dave, I can't let you quit yet. You still got to do more news shows. Larry, Larry, listen to me, Larry. Read the news. Swift banking system. You ever heard of Swift? Swift is yes. the number one debit card transaction uh, and money moving around the world. If you'll see on your debit card, you'll see Swift is is a is a conglomerate of banking movements. Swift banking system is launching CBDC, shocker, and tokenized platform expected to be released by 2025 or 2026. The Society for World Interbank Financial Te- Telecommunications, SWIFT. Has, oh, I'm glad you said that. I never could figure out what that stood for. Well, I couldn't either until tonight, but now we all know. Mm-hmm. Has recently announced their plans to launch a central bank digital currency system set to release roughly a year from now. In the article, I don't, I don't want to read it for time purposes, but it basically is explaining what we talk about all the time here on this mm-hmm. show, the digital programming of money. And what do we always say? If it's digital, it is programmable. programmable. And if it is programmable, then it can be turned on and turned off. Exactly. And that's why everything. Listen, do not buy the lie that everything is going electric and digital for convenience to save the environment, all this kind of, it ain't got nothing to do with any of that. It has everything to do that if it's digital, it's programmable. And if it's programmable, it can be turned off and turned on. And if you agree with them and you're a good little soldier and a good little sheep, your switch gets turned on and you get to eat that week. But if you're not a bad, if you're a bad sheep, you turn into a goat, they turn off your food. They turn off your gas. They turn off your power. They turn off your car. They turn off your phone. That's what all this is about. Sure. They want you. That's why they they don't want you to have cash. That's why banks all around the world are stopping re- even receiving deposits of cash. That's why you're going into stores and nobody wants to take cash anymore. Mm-hmm. That's why you have been programmed to not want to carry cash anymore, myself included. Yep. It's just don't, don't seem like. But guess what? That we are all being herded yep. towards one eventual goal. Great explanation for that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, you got any comments on it? Or you just want to say amen? I want to destroy it. I want to blow it up. I want to make it go away. That's what I want to do. Well, maybe this will make you feel better. Woo! Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy's in the house. It's the Supernatural AI. AI. Update. To all our new people here, you're freaking out like, what mm-hmm. have we tuned into tonight? Don't leave because you're going to love it. You're going to love it. So, 
this is, uh, I guess this is, this is super, this is, guess, sort of AI stuff, because there's AI got to be involved, but this is just scary. Oh, this was the Korean artificial sun reactor sets record at 100 million degrees. Thank God. You remember, you remember when we first started our show, we reported on this, that the, the Chinese and Korea was developing an artificial sun. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is from the bite.com or actually from futurism.com. Uh, that's seven times as hot as the sun's core. South Korean scientists have set a new world record using the Korean superconducting tomahawk, uh, tomahawk. I thought I said tomahawk. It's tomahawk. Advanced <laughs> research or K star is what I'll call it. Uh, which is an artificial sun, a nuclear fusion reactor, in what they say is a major step forward for the tech. The team was able to generate plasma temperatures of 100 million degrees Celsius. And I'm from America. I don't know what that means in Fahrenheit. <laughs> Seven t- it's, a, it's real hot because our numbers is higher than that. Yeah. Okay. Seven times as hot as the sun's core. For 48 seconds. And by the way, we're the ones that right, that's right. All the rest of you around the country, you need to get lined up with us, okay? We're right. You're wrong. For 48 seconds, 48 seconds, is there any number of significance of about 48 that we need that you can think of? Mm, well, there's a lot of reference to Exodus 4-8 in regards mm, that's true. to and, the <gasps> eclipse, right? April 8th. April 8th. 48. Mm-hmm. They ran that thing for 48 April 8th. What? <laughs> That's a, y'all just, you see that look on my face? That's what's called an immediate download. Y'all, y'all saw, y'all got it when I got it. They ran that thing for 4 8. God. Uh, <laughs> indicating we're finding new ways to confine the stuff and potentially turn it into a viable source of power for longer periods. The facility's previous record set in 21 was just 30 seconds. In theory, fusion energy is simple. By fusing atoms together inside a reactor, scientists are hoping to generate a net positive amount of safe and pollution-free energy, the same way the stars, such as our solar system, sun, work. However, despite the latest breakthrough in many decades of research, we're still nowhere near a place where fusion reactors could replace conventional nuclear reactors at that scale. So in my opinion, this is just sort of like more stuff from a movie that's just scary that... Mm -hmm. You know, you ask the question, what could go wrong with a, a temperature being generated on Earth that is seven times hotter than the sun? What could possibly go wrong with that? What, what in the world are we doing? And we're opening up. Come on. 48 seconds. Mm. And on 4-8, CERN is firing back up. Yep. <sighs> yep, but you know we. I, but I'm, I got some good news though, because you know what you want good news. Yes. So this will settle your heart, Sandy, because AI is about to be out of control. Terminator's almost here. You know we've already covered all that. But the mm-hmm. good news is help is on the way. Awesomeness. The United Nations has passed the first global AI resolution for our protection. Okay, I can barely Thank wait you. to get into this. Thank you, United Nations. Uh, because we know that you care about continuing to populate the earth with people and living wonderful lives, uh, and you just want us to continue to grow in population. Uh, this article and interview uh, with leading industry figures have gained much recognition as a key influencer, blah, blah, blah. It says the United Nations General Assembly has adopted a landmark resolution on AI, aiming to promote the safe and ethical development of AI technologies worldwide. It's co-sponsored by 120 countries and was adopted unanimously by all 193 UN members. Do you not are you not automatically skeptical when <laughs> everyone votes in favor of anything now? <laughs> uh, all nations of the world said yes. But I want to show you this right here. Uh, if I can get it, let's see, let's get it to work. I think this might be it right here. Uh, uh, dun, dun, dun. No, I gotta do this, do this, do this. Oh man, I want to show you this video. I hope I, I want to show you this video of this lady, because you talk for a minute while I'm looking for this. What your your thoughts on that? Okay, so um, 
like you said, everybody's voting for this. It, that sadly reminds me of the thing coming up in May yeah. with the uh, with the whole what is that called? The, oh, the the, the, pandi- the global pandemic treaty. The Clin- pandemic treaty. Uh, yeah. Why is everybody unanimous, unanimously agreeing to this? Well, I guess they feel like they have to. So it's a shoe in. Obviously, it's going to happen. But yeah. there's so much AI stuff. Yep. And I, I hate it personally. All right. Now, I want you to listen to this. I got the video. This is the lady from the UN General Assembly talking about the vote. But just listen to the wording. L- listen to the words that she uses. This inclusive, comprehensive inclusive. resolution is in a... I want you to listen how many times she says inclusive and how many times she says ensures that no one is left behind. It's just DEI. This is, this is saying we're, go, we're going to make sure it's woke. We're going to make sure that everything, that all the, the, the letters and all this kind of stuff is protected by this AI. Listen to this. Strictly linked with an inclusive comprehensive approach to adopting it. Over the last few months, we have worked with over 120 countries representing every part of the world and every level of development. Whoa, sorry. Sorry. I don't know. Okay. Sound like a cicada. The risk and benefits of AI have the potential to impact all of us. And so approaching it requires all of us. Mm. The resolution we just adopted reflected our shared responsibility and collective fate. It leaves no one behind. It leaves, leaves no one behind. Work. I mean, come on. That's just that's just that's just woke talk. It's all it is. Right. It's all it is. It's all it's not even worth the piece of paper. It is not going to protect anyone from the Terminator that's coming. It's already here. You're so right. I mean, it's a part of the plan. We see subtle evidence of it um, more all the time. All the time. All the time. It's crazy. Well, it goes on and on and on. I want to show you this couple more things. So don't go. Don't go anywhere because you're going to want to know these things. Um, yeah. This here is uh, is very very interesting to me. Uh, when it sp- speaks of AI, tech and financial gurus seek to leverage. AI to live forever and preserve their wealth. And we know the word of God has told us this was coming. It says, get ready for human level AI that has the most powerful lobby and country the world backing in its rights, uh, backing their rights, technocratic elites. These companies and their systems, of course, will continue to work with governments and most sophisticated weaponization of AI, manipulate police and conduct war in domestic foreign fronts. But as much as all that is, there is a more envisioned for AI. Tech elites see themselves as merging with AI in life. They are furiously investing in life extension technologies to find the genetic fountain of youth that will allow them to, quote, escape velocity from the timeline of death. You're talking about Transcendence, the movie, and it doesn't exist? Doesn't exist. (laughs) Supposedly, and they're more when we know it don't for mortals have always faded. One of the things that I have to get to my favorite pet subject on human health span and longevity we just launched the largest X Prize ever a hundred million, hundred eleven million dollars of capital to the team that could reverse loss of function in muscle and cognition by 20 years or more. So we have 300 teams hopeful we'll get to a thousand teams competing for this prize, and it's all funded out of Saudi Arabia and out of the United States to extend life. But mm. if this video is on here, and I think it is, this was one of Klaus Schwab. That's only a 30-second clip of Klaus Schwab saying this at a recent gathering about technology coming into your body and extending your life. You have the chance to look forward to a career of 50 years. And my own opinion... Yeah, maybe, maybe more. You will get some injections and some uh, and so on, and um, um, and then don't forget your your avatar will continue to live. So uh, 
uh, and your, your brain will be replicated see, through artificial intelligence and algorithm. Um, so we don't know, but at least 50 years. He better quit worrying about his avatar and worry about yeah. what he's going to hear when he stands before the Lord. Oh! <laughs> Preach! It's so ridiculous, and people can buy into this. And, they, and he laughs like he's joking, but they, and they all laugh in the crowd. They may be thinking he's joking, but he's not joking. No. He's not joking, y'all. He's no. not joking. He really believes. He doesn't it. hold back. He no. puts every. He's already told you you're going to eat the bugs. Eat the bugs. You, you think he was kidding about that? Yeah, right. He's already told you you'll own nothing and be happy yep. with a smile on his face. Sure did. Sure did. And then, of course, there's always, we seem to always come back to the sometimes savior of the world for free speech and sometimes the Antichrist. We don't know which one he is. Oh, Elon Musk. Uh, but Elon is an interesting guy, dude. I'm telling you. Uh, but remember, we said recently, just a couple of weeks ago, the first patient to receive the Neuralink, the actual right. human being, was now sending messages. Well, now he says, I am using the force. The patient who received Neuralink implant says, I am using the force as he plays a video game with his mind. Hmm. Now, look, let's just be honest. This is awesome that this fully paraplegic man who could not function in life is now functioning. We understand this is a great thing, right. but we also know where it's going. Last week, Elon Musk nearly demonstrated that his implant is performing as advertised following a paralyzed man who was one of the first patients to receive the implant to play the video game Civilization Four with his mind. Mm -hmm. And it goes on to show the video here. <laughs> All right, we should be streaming live here. Hello world, how's it going out there? My name is uh, Bliss, and I'm an engineer at Neuralink. And uh, I'd like to introduce... Did he just say his name was Bliss? He said Bliss. I'm sorry. Hello, I my name is Bliss. Is that what he said? Introduce he you said to Bliss. the first ever user of the Neuralink device. And I think you're my only telekinetic friend that I have. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not many more of those out there. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, my name's Nolan Arbaugh. I'm 29 years old. Um, about eight years ago, I was in kind of a freak diving accident and uh, dislocated my C4, C5. So I'm a complete um, quadriplegic. Uh, so I'm paralyzed from below the shoulders. I have no sensation or movement uh, mm. below my level of injury, so below my shoulders. Mm. Yeah, that, that about covers it, right? Do I need to do some of your dogs here? Let me yeah. yeah. You can so see him. So started out with a few to try and eat, had basically um, um, but uh, I hmm. would you play that like at 2 a.m. before or what was the? Oh no, there was no way. There was no way for me to do that. Um, so I'm not gonna play the, the whole video because it's, it's 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 a little monotonous. But he goes on into shows and demonstrates, and this is crazy, Sandy. He thinks of moving something, and he can't move anything with his body. And he looks at the screen and he thinks of moving this mouse or this character, I, and it moves. I get, uh, and it moves. I have it, anxiety with you. You just talking about that and explaining it. But I'll say again what I said last week. Um, if this, if this is really true, right. and this can really be done, it is very, very disturbing to me. I'm very bothered by that. Oh, but I know where you're going. And I also want to say to those that might say this in the live chat mm -hmm. and in the comment section, we're also very, very, very happy for this man. I'm excited and, for any kind of freedoms that yeah. he's experiencing now. But and, we know we and know the big picture. Rejuvenation. But we it's not going to stop there. No, we know where it's going. It's not going to stop with no. him. And, 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 and it's going to be weaponized. It, exactly. And this this is not in any way to take away from this man. And others that might be helped, maybe blind or something like that. But it was never built and designed for this. Probably this, not. This is a, an added blessing and also maybe even a testing phase. It is all coming back to transhumanism. All right, I'm that, getting a breaking story. If anybody knows about um, California Highway 1 collapsing in a landslide, I'm seeing hundreds of people rescued after part of this highway collapses, if anybody has any further information on this, I don't know if this happened Hi only. Highway what? 
Highway 1 collapses landslide. Is that, that's not Pacific Coast Highway, is it? Okay, uh, two hours ago, motorists creep along one lane after part of California iconic, iconic Highway 11 collapses. One. Highway, Highway 1, let's, let's look at this. Okay, uh, we've got multiple screens up if you see us looking left yeah, and right. Yeah, okay. A giant chunk so, of Highway 1 collapsed. Okay, so. Big Sur. Wow. Oh, that's right. I mean, that's that high that you always see on the movies and stuff. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Look how much fell down. Wow, look how high that is. So they've got the whole, so that's breaking news that we're getting right here. Motors crept along a one-lane stretch of scenic California's iconic Highway 1 on Monday after a giant chunk of it collapsed into the ocean following heavy weekend rains stranding as many as 1,600 people in the coastal community of Big Sur. Okay, so they weren't in peril. They no. just had to be rerouted. They had to be rerouted, yeah. Okay, that's what I was concerned about is people were actually injured. Okay. okay. All right, so we got one more show, one more news article to show you. Don't go anywhere, and we always like to say right before we go, and then we save the best for last, so don't go anywhere because this is very much tied to the eclipse, what I'm about to show you, this last thing. Uh, but we always want to encourage you to always know how to go to our website, LarryRaglin.com. It's linked down below, LarryRaglin.com. You see it all through the show, LarryRaglin.tv as well. They both go there. You can see all of our shows. There's the Eclipse show, some other things. You can also partner with us, one-time gift, become a monthly partner. You can watch our television show episodes. You can see our contributions to the Epic yeah, Times. Yes, so we need help if we're going to build that studio. Yep, it's, we got big plans, but we're still designing it. You can get a copy of our book. You can go to our merchandise store, connect with us on social media, and join our mailing list. All of that is there at LarryRagon.com or LarryRagon.tv. Now, I'm going to rapid fire this. This mm. is this is going to scare people when they hear me talk about i got eight things to tell you because that could take me normally an hour. <laughs> but I'm going to rapid fire them. I promise you that. But this, <sighs> this is an incredible – in fact, I got this originally from End Time Headlines – uh, Ricky Scapera that was Ricky blessed to be Scapero. on here with us tonight. He's just so, so awesome. Eight extremely unusual events that will happen during the month of April. Okay, so today's, today's the first day of the month of April 2024. April Fools. And this is not April Fool's, okay? Uh, by the way, I said earlier, April Fool's is really uh, National Atheist Day because the Bible says a fool has said in his heart there is no God. That's mm, true. All right, so, so let's just rapid fire. These are things that are coming in the month of April. Mm -hmm. Number one, as we enter the month of April, the devil comet has become visible to the naked eye in the Northern Hemisphere. Ponds Brooks, that we've talked about, no, otherwise known as the Devil Comet and the Mother of Dragons Comet, is currently visible in the night skies in the Northern hem Hemisphere, <laughs> providing a unique spectacle for both amateur stargazers and professional astronomers. Yeah. Number two, on April 4th, there will be an extraordinary alignment of four planets just four days before the great American eclipse of 24. Venus, Neptune, Saturn, and Mars will align in the morning sky. Venus, Saturn, and Mars will be visible to the naked eye, but you'll need a telescope or high-powered binoculars to see Neptune. Number three, on April 8th, the seven other planets in our solar system, along with the sun and the moon, will appear to form a straight line in the sky when looking from Jerusalem... Towards the east, this will this was discovered by a friend of this article writer's, uh, Rachel Baxter, and the following is a graphic of that line in the sky that was sent. My goodness, unbelievable! All seven planets line up on April the eighth, on the day of the eclipse. Mm. She said she goes on to say she asked Chat B, Chat GPT to tell her how rare it is to have a straight line like this, and she was told by Chat GPT that it would only happen once every 32 million years. What? That's what ChatGPT said. What? My Number four, also on April 8th, as we covered earlier, CERN is planning to fire up its Large Hadron Collider. The world's largest and most powerful particles, et cetera, is, is scheduled to smash protons on April 8th in search for invisible particles secretly powering our universe. Okay, Number five, the most anticipated event of April is the Great American Eclipse of 2024. Mm -hmm. USA Today is calling it the astronomical event of the decade. And, of course, millions of people are expected to travel to see this spectacle. Number six, 
As the eclipse passes over America on April 8th, NASA will be firing three market three rockets into the moon's shadow. NASA has announced it will fire three scientific sounding rockets into the moon's shadow on Monday, April 8th during a partial solar eclipse in what will be in, in what will be a total solar eclipse for a 115 mile wide path through parts of Mexico, 15 US states and Canada. It says that their 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 atmosphere, they're trying to dis- discover how how drops in sunlight and temperature affects Earth's upper atmosphere. That's what they're saying, okay? And by the way, Apep is named after the serpent deity from ancient Egyptian mythology, the nemesis of the sun, deity Ra, according to NASA. Number seven, ominously, on April 8th, the great American eclipse of 2024 will complete the giant X over the new Madrid fault Mm -hmm. zone that the great American eclipse of 2017 began. And number eight, during the month of April, the cicada apocalypse is coming. (laughs) (laughs) All of that is happening in the month of April, 2024. Wow. Mm. I mean, come on. That's a lot. That's a lot. (laughs) That is a lot. Now, I've got my Bible study Wednesday night. I've got breaking news throughout the week. We've got uh, Paul Begley going to be with us Thursday night, and oh, we have a special, you two special show. are going to tear it up. Oh, it's this, I mean, come on. It's right before the eclipse. Exactly. And then tomorrow night, we have a special show with Pastor Jenny Donnelly. It's going to be talking about <laughs> keep your hands off my kids. Stay away from my kids. It's called Don't Mess With The Kids. It's a powerful yes. show. A lot of stuff happening. One week from tonight, we'll be live in Arkansas covering yep. The Great American Eclipse. Any parting thoughts? Uh, I don't know what else there is to say. That is a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. And we want to say thank you to everybody that watched tonight. Biggest crowd we've ever had on a Monday Night Live. So Smash exciting. Smash that like button. Thank you, YouTube family. Yes. Thank you, everybody that was with us tonight. Invite others to mm-hmm. watch this program. Share it with your family and friends. Copy and paste it. Send it in a text. And... In just a couple of minutes, I'll have the link to the Eclipse yes. show. Go watch it and send it to as yeah, many people as I'll you can. I'll just say again, if you've not seen this show, you need to go out there and watch. You need to share it. Yep. Yep. It's a, it's going to yep. really help you understand what's coming. God bless you. want to thank you for being mm-hmm. here, and we want to remind you. Wait a mm-hmm. minute. Who you got? Who you got? Oh, who? our little friend wanted to come uh, and say goodbye when it's uh, time. Oh, bye, buddy. But, yeah. We ain't, ain't woke, woke, but we, we are certainly, certainly oh.